thank you for joining with us this afternoon. My name is Millicent Kaunda. I love the Lord as my personal savior. I'm a mother of two young adults and a wife to Pastor Kaunda. And I'm grateful to God. Hallelujah. Yes, so we want to go straight to the word of God. And uh, we are going to read from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. Isaiah 40, from verse 28 to 31. This is a word that has been released by the prophet of the house. is the ear of mounting up, the ear of mounting up. And this is what the Bible says. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those, tell your neighbor, but those. Mm -hmm. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Um, I was just looking at this scripture since the time when the word was released. As we were doing the crossover, our bishop came and uh, elaborated it for us as the rear ear of mounting up. And I was just thinking, what this word that Isaiah, Pro Prophet Isaiah was giving to the Israelites, exactly at what point was it being given? And I came to realize that at this particular time when the word was being given to the Israelites, they were under captivity and they were under the oppressive rule of the Assyrian powers. And so the Assyrians had invaded the land, had taken them captive, and they were going through very hard circumstances politically. They were going through very hard circumstances as families and as individuals, and some of them had come to a point where they were giving up. They were feeling like God is not concerned about them anymore. They were feeling like God has allowed them to go through their troubles on their own. They were feeling like, where is this God whom our father forefathers spoke to us about whom they said had rescued them from the land of Egypt. They kept asking each other, where is this God? And if he's still there, is he really concerned about us? And it's at that point that Isaiah comes and is asking them, haven't you heard that the Lord is everlasting? Haven't you known that he is a powerful God? Haven't you known that he's the one who gives strength when strength is required, when people are fainting? He's the one who gives strength when you are weak. He's the one who comes in and empowers you. And ultimately, Isaiah finishes by saying that in as much as all these things are have gone on, you need to know one thing, that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and not only renew their strength, but they shall mount up with wings like eagles. Bonas, if you will. And as I was looking at the background of the story, I couldn't help but think of what we as Kenyans, we as people who are seated here, have gone through in the last one year. Things that we never budgeted for, things that we never imagined could happen to us. They just came and one evening when we are listening to news, we are being told this has been discovered in the nation. And four weeks later, we are being told there is a lockdown. You cannot travel to any other county and if you are like me that had never crossed my mind it, it had never crossed my imagination and what followed after that were hardships after hardships I remember I thought that it was going to just last one week or two weeks and it will go but it has lasted over and over even today there are still people who are being said to be unwell and we can sit back and say where is this God of old the God that our fathers of faith talked about 
The God whom they said used to heal sicknesses and diseases. The God whom they said used to rescue people when things were very difficult. Haven't we prayed? Has he forgotten about us? Has he decided to leave us alone so that we can go through these hard circumstances? And while still some of us sat back and said, what is this that the prophet of the house had released? What did he mean when he said it is the year of restoration and demonstration? Did he really hear from God? Maybe those are the things that were passing through our minds. Because restoration, 2020 did not look like restoration at all. So you're wondering, where did he hear this word restoration before he gave it to us? And then immediately when the year was coming to an end, he again steps up and say, it is the year of mounting up. Praise the name of the Lord. And indeed, it is the year of mounting up. Does it mean there are not going to be storms? No, that is not what it means. Storms will still be there, but it is the year still of mounting up. Was last year the year of restoration? Yes, it was the year of restoration. And that's how come you are sitting here looking at me and listening to me speaking. Because if it was not the year of restoration, that pandemic would have killed you and me and we wouldn't be here today. If it was not the year of restoration, the prophecies that some people out in the West had spoken about, about bodies littering the streets of Africa, would have come to pass. But because it was a year of demonstration of God's power, you and I kept interacting with each other. And lo and behold, you are sitting here in good health. Why? Because God decided to restore our health. And we normally like speaking with one other together with my siblings and we keep saying, you know what, maybe some of us passed through this sickness and we didn't even know it. We didn't know it because God came in in a speedy way and decided he is not going to allow us to go through the symptoms that we have been told about. We are not going to go to the ICU. He came in because he, it was the year of restoration and he restored you. He demonstrated his power at a time when you didn't even know what was happening. Maybe you thought it was a normal cold. What has if you? But maybe it was COVID. Who knows? I was talking to a lady who works in Camry, and this is what she told me, that they did a test, um, blood test, on some two million people in Kenya. And as they checked the blood sample of these two million people, they discovered that most of them had developed antibodies against corona virus. At what point do you develop antibodies? It is when you have suffered the sickness and now your body has fought until it has developed immunity and developed antibodies. Were all these people in the ICU? No. Were they sick? No. But they had developed antibodies. What do you think happened? God restored their health. Now, that is the same God who is coming in again in the year 2021. And he is saying it is the year of mounting up. And for the last few weeks, that word mounting up grab, uh, grabbed my attention so much. And the one thing that came to mind was an aeroplane. An aeroplane. An aeroplane. If you walked into the airport... Before aeroplanes started flying, maybe you lived during the times of the Wright brothers who invented the aeroplane. And you saw them develop something, and it was on a runway somewhere, and someone told you that this thing could fly. You would have said, no, it is not possible. One has a few. Why? Because the thing looks big. It looks enormous. How on earth? Is it able to fly? And so this week I kept asking myself, how does a plane mount up? How does a plane fly? What causes it to go through the runway to a point where it is able to mount up? I don't know whether you've ever asked yourself that question. And I discovered that there are normally four forces that are in play. And four forces combined together allow me to go back to a physics class just in a bit. Kidogo too. 
wale wa kufanya physics tutajaribu kueleza hallelujah <laughs> physics class kidogo tu there was something that we used to call the aerodynamic force and i remember during the week i went to a book that we did in high high school form 5 and 6 it was called abbot nyonga pona kumbuka abbot a few of us we went back i went back to abbot and i was trying to search what is aerodynamic force now aerodynamic force is a combination of four forces which i will try to explain so that we will know what it means that we will be able to fly, uh, to to mount up with wings the first force that is normally there is the force that we call weight weight uzito and weight is called it's what causes a matter to stand still on a surface weight it's because i have weight that i'm standing and not floating bona sifiwe weight the second force that is normally in play is the force or that they call lift bona sifiwe lift i wish had men made kaleka aeroplane kakaratasi <laughs> lift now what happens in lift an aeroplane has wings isn't it siko no mabawa eh eh now when an aeroplane is in motion it begins pole 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 and then takes off at a very high speed when it's taking off at a very high speed there's normally something we call wind the lower current wind that blows underneath the wings now this lower current that blows underneath the wings moves at a slower speed whereas there is the other upper current wind that moves on top of the wings that moves at a very fast speed trying to overcome the one blowing underneath and because the one blowing underneath is slower the law of physics says that because it is slower it is able to overcome the one that is blowing under so we call it the force of lift the third force is what we call thrust now thrust is what causes something to be in motion when you ignite even your car it is thrust that causes it to move to the front and finally there is another force we call drag drag msijali sitaka kwa physics kwa muda mrefu the other force we call drag the force of drag is what tries to pull the plane back tries to pull the plane and even in a vehicle when you step on the brakes what you are using is the force of drag and that's why ukikanyaga emergency brake una move to the front and then drag pulls you back to the right position bona yesu asifiwe tuko pamoja now for a plane to be able to fly then lift the force that is above lift must be greater than weight and thrust must be greater than drag sasa nimetoka kwa class ya physics now let's come back here bona asifiwe hallelujah Mm-hmm. Now we have been told that we will mount up with wings like eagles. For us to be able to mount up with wings like eagles, we must deal with the force of weight. And when I'm talking about weight, I'm not talking about the surface area. So and so has added weight. Ah uh-uh. ah I'm not talking about that. Let us look at Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, "Therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us." Bwana asifiwe. 
This is uh, the writer of the book of Hebrews. is speaking to the Hebrews and he is telling them, for you to be able to run the race, for you to be able to walk through this journey, there is one thing that you must do. You must ensure that you throw off every weight that is troubling you. And most of those weights come in form of sin that is troubling us. And so in this year of mounting up, we will have to throw out the weight of sin so that we can be lighter. We will have to throw off the weight of bitternesses so that we can be lighter. We will have to throw out the weight of unforgiveness so that we can be lighter. Otherwise, if all these things will still be full in our hearts. It does not matter how much you will keep confessing that you are mounting up. Believe you me, the force of weight will keep you at the surface and there is no place that you will be going. And like our bishop had said in the previous service, that as people will be mounting, there are those of us who will find themselves remaining in the same position. By the end of this year, there are people who will say they mounted, they will have gone above the storm, but there are those who will be wondering, what was this mounting all about? So we have to deal with that weight that so easily besets us so that we can be able to spread our wings in readiness for takeoff. In this month of January, People are doing prayer and fasting, the 40 days of prayer and fasting. What in essence we are doing, we are on the runway, taking off pole pole, moving pole pole. And we are just about to kupiga ile corner so that we take off at a terrific speed and we'll be able to mount high. And my brother, my sister, it will depend on the weight that you're carrying. In this season, this is not the season to hold grudges with anyone. It is the season to let go of everything that will cause you not to be able to mount up in the year of 2021. And so we are going to deal with weight. We are going to deal with weight. We are also going to deal with the force of drag. That one that keeps causing us, we move two steps in front and then we come back three steps. So constantly you've been binding the spirit of delay, but you're constantly on the same place. We have to also deal with the force of drug. Drug comes in as a result of doubt. Did God really say? Did God say we are mounting up? Was that uh, was that bishop really sure? Is he really a prophet of God? And you know, as you keep on, like we are being told, you don't negotiate with the word of God. As you keep on negotiating and asking yourself questions, what is stepping in your mind is doubt. And with doubt, you cannot be able to mount up. You will move in one, two steps on the runway at the place where you're moving at the slow speed. But just before you get to the place where you're supposed to take off at a faster speed so that you can mount up, you'll find yourself being dragged behind, two steps behind. My brother, my sister, deal with every doubt in your life. Do not allow any doubt in your life because the word of God is true and it is settled in heaven. Bona asifiwe. A story is told of Elisha. He is working with his mentor, Elijah, and he comes to a point where he's meeting with a council of prophets and the prophets are telling him, why don't you go back to your town? Don't you know that your prophet today is being taken away? And you know, that was to create doubt in him. Because all along he had been working with Elijah and there is that which he wanted to get from Elijah. But he's being told, don't you know, he's being taken away. In other words, creating doubt that this thing that you've been waiting for all this while is not going to come forth. So you better go back to your town. You better go back and buy some other oxen because Elisha had set on fire the plow that he used to use. He had also slaughtered all the bulls, that, all the oxen that he was using to plow his land, roasted it, and he followed Elijah. And so when he's being told, 
why don't you go back by the prophets? The Bible says they were prophets. Why don't you go back? Don't you know your prophet is being taken today? And Elisha kept answering, I know, I am aware, but don't talk about it. I am going to follow until I get it. <coughs> and you know, in this season, there are so many prophetic words that have been given. And we are not saying they are not true. Some of them are true. But you know what? There's that word that has been released by our prophet. So whatever else has been released, I know I heard about it, but we are mounting up. Yes, I know there will be a lot of trouble because of what happened last year. The effects will be felt in this year, yes. But the, what does the word of God say? We have been told that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings like eagles. I am not going to allow anything to deter me because by the end of this year, I will have mounted up. So we know, but we are mounting up. We know but we will continue waiting on the Lord until that which he has said concerning this house we are seated in today comes to pass. Does mounting up mean there will not be storms? No. Storms are going to be there. COVID is still here with us. There are people who will still be infected. We will still be watching news and we will be told out of 7,000 samples that were taken or people who were tested, maybe 1,000 have been found positive. It is okay, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Are jobs going to be affected? Yes. Will the economy be worst it? Yes, it has been worst it even right now as we are talking. But the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We are not going to allow the force of drug to bring us back. We have already taken off. This is day 17 of the month of January, of the year 2021. We are already on the runway and nothing, nothing will by any means Stop us. Hallelujah. I want to talk about the force of lift. Lift. For us to go higher, then what ought we to do? We will have to dwell in the place of prayer. The place of prayer and faith will be like the wind that is blowing pole pole or slowly underneath the wings of that aeroplane. And so it is time for us to spread our wings so that we can allow prayer, we can allow the word of God, we can allow faith to take us high up. Even when the force of gravity is trying to pull us down, remember I said that the force of lift must be greater than the force of weight to be able to take off. And so our prayer life, we cannot say we will only pray for the 40 days in the month of January. It will be a system. It will be a lifestyle. Whether the church has called for prayer and fasting or not, as an individual, you live in the place of prayer because that is what will propel your wings to pick up and get to the place where you'll be able to mount up. Buona asifiwe. And so in yourself, together with your family, you're going to tell yourself that this is the year of prayer. You're going to say, my house, my family shall be a house of prayer for all nations. Which nations? Like for my house and Pastor Kaunda, we have the two other nations that are there. We have a nation called Kate, my son, and we have another nation called Joy, my daughter. So our house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. Our church shall be a house of prayer for all nations. And like we normally say that the doors of this church are open throughout. You do not have to wait until someone will be coordinating prayer here. Because we are in the process of being motivated by lift. We have to be lifted above the storms. Hallelujah. We are just taking off. We are just taking off. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24. I said prayer and faith. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24. The Bible says, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. 
For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Hallelujah. Those are some of the things that will lift us off the ground. The word of God. In this year of 2021, you cannot survive minus the word of God. The Bible says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. That is Psalms 119 verse 11b. And then the force of thrust. The force of thrust. The force of thrust is normally applied at the front of the aeroplane. The front of the aeroplane. And that's why when you look at the nose of the plane, it's curved a bit. So that it's pointing towards the direction that it is going. It is pointing towards the direction. It's as if it's giving you direction based on the compass that is inside the plane. The compass that normally has north, south, east, and west. Now, in this year for us to move and be able to take off, the force of thrust will come in when we are in intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Bona is a Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. We will not be able to mount up with wings like an eagle unless we develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Communion with the Holy Spirit. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That will be so mandatory in this dispensation. Bona So I've talked, we have to deal with our weight. We have to deal with those things that are dragging us behind. We have to deal with the winds so that we are in prayer and in the word of God. And ultimately, we have to deal with the Holy Spirit and draw closer to him so that we will be intimate. Now, the Bible talks about an eagle. We will mount up with wings like an eagle. When you look at an eagle... It looks like an aeroplane of some sort. It, actually, the forces that I've talked about are the same forces that causes an eagle to fly way up. And when the eagle is soaring, it does not flap its wings. And it is going. Why? Because it knows that when it is mounting high up, if it makes a mistake of flapping its wings, it will lose energy and come back down. In this year, as we are mounting up with wings like eagles, we cannot afford to flap our wings by looking around at what people are saying. We cannot be able to flap our wings with gossip. Hallelujah. We cannot be able to lose energy with things that are not adding value to our lives. Our focus will be the sun of righteousness. Hallelujah. Our focus will be the sun of righteousness. There is one predator that is known that normally preys after an ego or runs after an ego to attack an ego. And this predator is called a condor. A condor. It's a large bird. Twice the size of an eagle. Normally it's found around South America where most of the eagles are. It is so large and so ugly also. Very ugly. And a condor knows that when it gets an eagle on the ground, he will defeat it or it will defeat it. It will attack and kill it. But the ego also knows that fully well. And so because it knows that fully well, it does not wait for the condor to come before it takes off. It normally takes off and flies towards the sun because it behaves as if it has photochromatic 
specks, such that the rays of the sun does not affect its eye. Now, a condor cannot fly as high as an eagle. We have a predator, and his name is the devil. In the year 2021, he will come after you. Did he stop last year? He has not stopped. He will still come after you. He will still come after me. But you'd better be aware so that you'll be able to rise up above where he can fly. And no wonder we have been given the word mounting up. Because God already knows that there is a condo. The Bible says that he moves to and fro seeking for who to devour. He did it in the days of Job of old. The Bible says that when the sons of God went to present themselves, the devil was in their midst. Ali Paulizo, where are you from? He said, I'm just from up and about. The only one truth he did not say was what he was up and about doing. He did not want to finish saying, I was looking for your people to devour. He was up and about. During the time when Jesus was born, he was up and about seeking the life of Jesus. During the time when Adam and Eve were in the garden of Eden, he was up and about seeking for who to devour. And he found Eve, he devoured, and as a result, devoured Adam also. And so that is his job description. He is moving up and about. Today, the 17th of January, he is moving up and about. He is sprawling up and about. What is he doing? He is seeking to devour you and you and myself. And so what are we going to do? We are going to ensure we stay in the place of prayer. We deal with our weight. We deal with our drug so that we can thrust ahead and so that we can lift us, uh, we can, God can be able to lift us through his word through prayer, through faith God can be able to lift us up with mount, we will be able to soar up as an eagle mounting up with wings like eagles the choice is yours you can choose to stay on the ground does an eagle fly when there is a storm yes, actually it's in the midst of the storm that he gets very excited and is able to move way higher. And so my brother, my sister, even though there may be storms, I don't know. Just like we did not know last year. God has not yet revealed it. How this year will be like. At least to me, I don't know. But even though there may be hardship, there may be storms, endeavor to soar higher above the storms where the condo cannot be able to reach you. Now, how then are you going to fly like an eagle? For you to be able to soar like an eagle, you must be born an eagle. Hallelujah. You must be born an eagle. Even if a chicken desired to mount up with wings, it cannot. One has a theory. From last year, I've been keeping chicken, and the farthest it can climb, itaruka tu ipande kwa dirisha ya nyumba. I love we rudichini. That is the farthest. It will flap wings kidogo in a loose energy in a rudichini. And so, as a chicken, even though it may desire to fly like an eagle, it cannot. We have those ones that are called crows. Is in a kawaitapa. It can only fly up to a certain level. But an ego who is born an ego, somehow there is something that is wired in them that when they spread their wings, at the end of their spread, the wings are able to spread in such a way until they look finger-like because they are ready to take off. What do I mean? You must be born again to be able to mount high. You must be born again to be able to soar high. Nicodemus walked in the dead of the night to go and see Jesus because he had heard Jesus teaching 
was way much different from what they used to, taught, uh, to teach as uh, the Pharisees. And as he went, he asked Jesus several questions. And Jesus told him, you must be born again. What am I saying? I'm not saying maybe if you're born again. No, I'm saying you must be born again to be able to mount up with wings like an eagle in this season. There is no option. It's not a maybe. It is the absolute truth. You must be born again. Hallelujah. And maybe you are born again, but you've still been playing with the weight of sin. You come to church on a Sunday, and you smile. You're looking nice. You're smiling. You can lift your hands high. But during the week, you meddled with sin. It didn't matter. You meddled with it. It's like you had a partnership somewhere. Nadambi. I want to tell you the truth. Even though you could be saying Bwana Asifiwe and people are saying Amen. If you meddled with sin, that weight of that sin will not allow you to take off from the runway in 2021. Hallelujah. Bwana Asifiwe Kuleju. At the tent, praise the Lord. And out there, praise the Lord. Amen. That is the whole truth. You must be born again. And you must endeavor to live a life of righteousness in this year. God has already started the, the, the job of separation. You know, in the past, we'd be given a word and we'd be told maybe it's the year of elevation. And yes, you meddled with sin here and there. And still you are able to purchase a house. You are able to purchase a home. And you thought God was okay with it. No, he is not. When we are talking about mounting up with wings, we are not just talking about property. We are not just talking about materials, but we are talking about God taking you to another level in the spiritual realm. A level of fellowship with him. A level of intimacy with him. A level of the supernatural accompanying your life. And at that level, sin cannot enter. A level of going behind the veil to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. At that level, sin cannot enter. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we are going to sow with wings like an eagle. And I thank God that today you came to this altar that has been called by the name of the Lord. You can choose to walk through that door having given your life to Christ Jesus. You can choose to walk through that door, having rededicated your life, having made a new commitment in your life to live for God, so that by the time we'll be getting to the end of this year, you will be saying, I was able to mount up with wings like an eagle. It is those who will wait upon the Lord who will mount up with wings like eagles. Not all people, only those who will wait upon the Lord. Have you waited for so long for a spouse? Have you waited for so long for a child? Have you waited until you feel like God has taken so long? Have you waited as long as Abraham did? Those who wait upon the Lord without wavering shall renew their strength and they'll mount up with wings like eagles. Maybe you waited as a young lady and you thought it was so long until you decided to help God. And so you decided, let me go and help God by getting a baby with that man. And maybe you're here today. I thank God that is a God of many chances. He can give you another chance like he gave Abraham. After he messed with Aga. Hallelujah. He is a God of many chances. The fact that you are in the house tonight means you have another chance. Hallelujah. That's why he made sure that you're not six feet under. He made sure that the pandemic could not take you. Because he loves you so much. 
Mercy just said, no, I'm not letting you go. Mercy said, no, sin will not take control of my daughter's or my son's life. Many times when we talk about things to do with relationships, it is the lady's sana sana because we can see the evidence. But you know what? God can see the evidence even in men. He knows what happened. But mercy is still saying no. Those are the weights we want to deal with. Those are the drugs we want to deal with so that we can be able to move forward and mount with wings. Hallelujah. At this juncture, if you could just bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you. Maybe you're there, you'd like to give your life to Christ. You're there, you'd like to give your life to Christ. You can just lift your hand from where you're seated. We may not be able to call you in front because of the protocols we are observing, but Jesus will be able to see that hand lifted. So you can lift and we'll be able to pray with you. You're here, or you're in the tent. Thank you so much, my sister. Thank you so much, my sister. Oh, yes, you want to join those two. You want to join those two who have lifted their hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you're in the tent, if you lift your hand, the ashes will be able to see because I believe they are there. If you're outside, you've lifted your hand. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And if we can just repeat this prayer together with our sisters. Yes, thank you so much. I can see that other sister too. Hallelujah. 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 If you're able to stand just where you are at. If there's nothing to hinder, you can see one carrying a child. You can remain seated. But if you're able to stand, just rise on your feet from where you are, where you are, where you are. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, God. Just repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you. We could help them. I come to you. I've realized that I'm not able to renew my strength. I'm not able to mount up with wings like an eagle unless I'm born again. And so today, I give you my life. I invite you to take charge, to take control. That eternal king, I will be yours in this year and the years to come. That my strength will be renewed as I wait on you. And I'll be able to mount up with wings like an eagle. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. In the name of the Lord. Lord, I bless you because of receiving me and giving me another chance. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord of Lords. <laughs> Hallelujah. We may have our seats. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, how I give you praise for my brothers and my sisters, God, who have given you their lives today. Eternal God, we call upon your name that you will sustain them. That even as they go through the new believers classes, oh God, you are going to help them, our Father, understand your word, that they'll be grounded in your word, our Father. 
Lord, we pray that you will protect them. Oh God, you'll hide them in your pavilion where the enemy cannot find them. And Lord, for the rest of us, oh God, I've released your word today. I pray that King in glory, if there be any weights that we need to deal with or any drugs, things that would pull us behind, that Jesus, you will come through for us, oh God, that eternal King, we will be able to throw off every weight, oh God, and eternal King will be able to mount up, oh Oh God, as we move forward in the year 2021, eternal Father, we thank you and we bless you because you are a good God and we know you watch your word to perform it, oh God. So receive praise, receive glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.